So what do we have here? Well, here we have a Panasonic RC FM AM calendar radio, digital, oh, so digital clock radio that has been just ever so slightly checked out. So we should, probably shouldn't actually do yeah. anything with it until uh, Noah finishes his conversation and comes down, but this is a flip clock that he obtained somewhere. Uh -huh. And uh, I believe he said it does not keep time. It looks like it'd be fun to take apart. Yeah, I agree. I'm interested in the mechanism. Authorization to proceed. I'm scared. You're scared? I'm scared, though. You're scared, is? It's timeless. Do not disassemble. Refer servicing to qualified service personnel. So I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't. So don't try this at home. Oh. You say it's already partially mm -hmm. unscrewed. Yeah. Or the throw it across the room method? Right. Well, that's really just sort of a corollary. Does it do anything if you plug it in? Let me find out. I believe he said it does not keep time over. Oh, there's another, there's another clock dial on here for setting the alarm time. Oh, there you, the calendar, you can change the day. Nice. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every change day, the day. day. I wonder what it does on leap year. Mm. Mm. Oh, there's a set time screwdriver. Screw missing. Uh, oh, we could we could knob nos for that. <laughs> All right, so what do you think for uh, this assembly procedure here? Well, the first thing we should do is unplug it. Oh, hey, you know, after you plug something in, remember that. Pump it. All right. Well, for the home audience who may not have been there originally, there's three screws across the, the back, holding the, the back down, and then there's tabs on the top holding it in. So we can just kind of tilt this forward. Look at all that stuff. Yep, that's a pretty chunky PC board right there with some nice wide traces on it. Nice. That's uh, vintage tech right there. Look at the state of the art electronics down here. Yep. Oh, look at that. Radio tuner, trim pots. Yep. Look, there's even a microchip of a Matsushita. What does wow. it say? AN217BB. Yep. Interesting. So um, we're going to have to be a little gentle with this because the uh, speaker. Mm -hmm. Which is still attached is soldered on both ends, so we can't just unclip it. Well, why don't we unscrew it? Yeah, we could do that. And pull it out. Do we have a, uh, a little Phillips? Mr. Hacky has one. Um, Help us out, Mr. Hacky. What are those 99 cents? That's really true. Uh, Alright, so we're gonna be careful to save all the parts here. We got a couple of clips and a couple of screws. Oh, yeah. This won't be it. We can we we can we can do two cameras here and get get, okay. get two angles. Get 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 fancy here. All right, walk us through it, doctor. So basically, all we've done so far is take the cover off and uh, remove the speaker from the outer cover, um, just because it was gonna be a little clumsy with it reconnected there. So the speaker was being held in the spot here with a couple of brackets, a couple of screws. We've gotten that out now. Um, so we'll set some of this stuff aside. So inside, this is looking like pretty standard radio stuff for now. Got an antenna coil here. Uh, I think this is a variable capacitor, which is usually what we see, I think, in these radio circuits. Uh, if anybody out there is watching and I'm wrong, don't make fun of me too much. But basically, I think the, the tuning knob usually sweeps the variable cap, which is basically adjusting the, the frequencies that are allowed through. Um, I don't know what that chip does, though. We might want to Google that. Mm. And, uh, that's vintage uh, IC right there. 
Um, I don't I don't know what that's about. Excellent. And, uh, what else we got? So, oh, this is also pretty common in these uh, radios. We have a tuning knob that's um, basically running a, a cable system to adjust uh, the indicator as well as rotating that variable cap we were talking about there. So you can see this one is particularly complicated um, because it's going in two different directions. Um, hey, Ross, don't mess up the live stream, right? So, so you don't have to whisper. It's okay to be on camera. So uh, anyway, so we got... You're on camera. We got the, uh, the, the, um, the dial wire rotating the indicator on the front in one direction and then doing a 90-degree turn, which is kind of interesting. You don't see that all the time, to ro rotate the, uh, the tuning mechanism. Double damage. Yep. Fancy. And then looking, uh, so that's kind of the radio section. So moving a little bit to the to the east here, <laughs> we got this motor which probably drives the clock mechanism. It's a, it's a looks like a motor with a gear reduction on it. Stepper. And uh, and then what else we got? This looks like these were the controls that were on the top, which I think are conveniently labeled here. Uh, that's the on-off on alarm selector. The tone adjustment, bass treble, volume adjustment, and then this button over here is the, the doze on the end. Doozy. It's a doozy. We're and a doozy. Uh, for those people at home, uh, this circuit board is an RUP342A, which probably doesn't mean anything to <laughs> anybody. Uh, oh, also, it's a Panasonic block model RC6493. It was. So, it was a good year. Yeah. Have we uh, exposed the part that sets of this down? That's the time set? We can, uh, so we can make time fly. Ah. So really, if this thing is a, if it's a key of time, what we really need to do... Oh, you just need a servo to that. Right. We'll hook a servo and manually increment the time in one minute intervals. Because that's efficient, right? Yeah. We'll just, actually, we, it's, get a video of, uh, we could just hook a stepper motor. Let's go click. Click. There, we fixed it. Right. <laughs> click. Click. Make this time is... fly. Whoa. This is how hackers fix clocks. Back to the future. Yep, We're seriously. Going fast forward. We just hit the one point. Uh, Alright, so what else we got in here? We got um, spin this around. We got uh, some rear connectors for the antenna, external antenna. That's probably a power transformer. And um, yeah, it's more of a clock mechanism. It's really not all that complicated a thing. I mean, it's really just the radio section and the clock section. That's pretty straightforward stuff. It'd be interesting to see if we could figure out why it's not keeping time though. It might just, I mean, the motor could be burned out or. Well, should we plug it in and look at it? Yeah, I think we should. Especially if... Can you look at the IC? Yep. The IC was a Matsushita uh, AN217, and then there's a BB at the end of it. I don't know if that's part of the chip number. It's in a different font, so it might not... It might be part of the chip mm -hmm. number or it might just be a separate designation. So I would try searching for it both ways. And uh, just taking a look here, I'm trying to see... Powering the motor for the clock go way down to the Never Neverland, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to track that or not. But if we plug it in, we, might, we should be able to see. I, I think the way this mechanism works is the motor turns constantly, but it's turned down to such a slow gear reduction that it takes a little while for it to exert enough force to flip. So, what we should do is let it run for at least a minute and see if anything happens? Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Or we also might be able to see the gear that's coming directly out of the motor, which is if you look in that way. You can see there's a white gear coming out of the gearbox. Gotcha. Uh, if you see that one moving, there's a lot more gear reduction that happens after that, so we may be able to see that one move. So let's see what happens. I plug it back in. All right. Uh, what can I unplug? Uh, you can unplug the you can unplug the turntables. All right. We're juicified. Um, I do not see that gear moving at all. Let's put a belt drive. What? That's it right there.
That's the tuning uh, for the radio. What I'm actually looking at is this right here is the motor. Oh, yeah. And then there's a gear reduction, like a transmission on it. And then coming out of there, there's several more gear reduction stuff going on there. And I don't see that gear moving at all. So. What gear is it in? Right? <laughs> I think what I'm feeling is you wiggling the clock. So I don't think the motor's doing anything. Is it separate? How many wires are coming out of the motor? Oh, Only wow. two. Only two. So, um, so there's gotta just be a really slow speed motor. Yep. Yeah. Matt Sushita got caught up by Panasonic, which makes sense. Oh, well, it's Panasonic. <laughs> we know nice. Yeah, so anyway, so that could be the motors burned out, or it could be there's stripped gears in the gear reduction box. But basically, like... No, I want to be careful sticking your fingers in. Oh, man. <laughs> Just throw that out there. <laughs> Not the A127 CD. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we fixed it. Good. You can actually do uh, hit uh, hit the red button to do a video. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. It's like a little flip show. Yeah, so if we wanted to like try to fix this for real, um, probably what we'd be getting into is disassembling this to the point where we can get the motor out. And then trying to drive the motor directly, like without the gearing, and see if it spins. If it doesn't spin, we need a new motor. If it does spin, then we'll probably get a strip of gears. That's basically it. Well, hopefully, not Bo's uh, finger there that he's sticking around inside of the lab. Oh, yeah, it's only 120. Only 120. So it looks like it looks like there's two contact points right there. Let me check for a little bit. Sharp. Just pull it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, this is totally like an operation. Oh, we got we got one we got both. And that's the first thing I have to say about it. We got one we got one twenty to the motor. So uh, well, looks well, like the motor's burned out. Assuming it leads are broken. Or not. Or just from what? So yes, the radio. If you get Russian radio. I'm going to take these screws out and see if we can the time What are we saying? Can we, can we now refer to it as the time circuit? Because uh, now they both shut off the time circuit. Time circuit's off. Time circuits are off. Flux capacitor. Flux. The uh, space-time continuum should should be... Uh, yeah, temporal distortion should be dissipating. I know. We found a radio earlier that only got stuff from the 80s. <laughs> Smells like bacon. Bo, you smell like bacon. Mm. 
It's that thing there. It's a motor. It's finished. This is the motor. <laughs> it's the it's the one that connects to the uh, the gearbox. Yeah, the mechanism. So the motor spinning, which drives the gearbox, which reduces it to way slow, and then periodically it flips the. Huh. The thing with your. So what could be going right? What could be wrong? Right? It was off balance. Trying to blame the uh, motor. We don't know. How, we're sort of theorizing if that could be significant enough to make a difference. Um, I could go either way. I could believe that as being a problem, or I could also see that as being like so. It's definitely not going to be. The thing well, is, it was working. It was just off slightly, right? Yeah. I think it was because it was off balance. Yeah. I'm, I'm in that camp. We gave, we gave, we gave it a V8. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. So now the the question is, do we put it back together and see what it does, or? Do we just stumble further? <laughs>
No, where's the input coming from? Oh, what the hell is that? Oh, oh. Just suck you on. Like you want? You need to build a case that incorporates both of those things. You have to play. You have to play a certain, you know, song to turn it off. Yep. You have to snooze. It, and it and it starts. It, it comes up with you know. It has like a, a ten song rotation. You know, like it might play Ode to Joy. It might play Green Sleeves. And you gotta play it to be able to shut that fucking thing off. That sounds terrible. Learn real quick, though. Yeah, it's like Jeremy Irons. Yeah. Totally hack the do the alligator clip hack. Hells yeah! <laughs> That's what you call a universal audio connector right there. <laughs> That's the off switch. So we we <laughs> so what you're saying is we've made a flip clock iPod compatible. Yes. Hacked. So what are you thinking there? Sticking a what in? Well, I. Dude, go straight. Just go into the phone. Yeah, there's speakers back there. Yeah. There's an eight. There's an eighth-inch cable back there somewhere. There's certainly an eighth-inch cable jack back there. If not, there's plenty of broken laptops that have them in it, or there's speakers back there that have them in it. It's all bad. Play with the aluminum casing around the inductor motor, and we added a little iPod input. So, we'll see how that works. Just as well as the internet, bro, probably. So, we've got. Cable. So, we're now amplifying our tablet through your yeah. clock radio. Hey, clouds. Hey, look, uh, I know you guys are really busy. You get that kid's birthday party on Thursday and that juggling on Friday. I know. How would you feel about playing a rock song? Hey, you have kept Great. the clock changing. The clowns are down. Thank you. 